this subject's teachers tackle in Key Stage 2 Geography and History is village settlements. Year 4 teacher Deborah Lord has found a challenging and creative way to teach the subject by utilising her local area. This year we're teaching invaders, settlers and settlements as a whole topic, a combined humanities topic, so that's history and geography. Invaders and settlers is the history side of the topic and the settlements is the geography side. So we're looking at the history of people over time and then the history of people over place. Well, the practical solution um, for this particular study is to do two field studies. One where we look at the historical element and one where we look at the geographical element. Today we're going on our field study trip this morning. We will be back in school in time for lunch. Okay, this morning it's the geography field trip, which will take place on a hill right behind the school, St Martin's Primary in Whirl, North Somerset. There are two learning outcomes today. The first one is that we are going to find out why Whirlbury was settled by the Celts and the Romans. And the second one is that you can complete a field sketch showing the connections and links between the various settlements. Watching Deborah's every move will be two experts. Alison Bailey is subject leader for geography in the Faculty of Education at UWE. Don Kimber used to teach geography to trainee teachers and is now a primary schools inspector. What I'm hoping to see is that it's well organised in terms of safety and secondly that the children are doing things, not simply having things pointed out to them, but they're able to engage in some level of investigation. I would hope that while the children are out in the environment, the teacher's going to encourage them to ask questions, to look around and see the environment, see the landscape they're in. Perhaps they can think about what this landscape is like. Now, we have six staff today. You've got me and Mrs Hollister. You've also got Mr Champ is coming to support us today, and we've also got Mrs Cross, Mrs Denford and Mrs Lane. Deborah has arranged for three parents and another teacher to help her. Bob Champ will assist with the history element of the field trip. With its dual focus on geography and history, the trip is a good example of how one activity can be integrated across different curriculum areas. OK, are we ready? Yes! Oh, that wasn't very exciting. Are we ready? Yes! It's the first time Deborah has done this particular field trip and it's already been cancelled once because of poor weather. But she's determined not to be put off. We're going to cross one group at a time this time. One of the biggest problems is a lot of teachers don't want to take children out on field studies. A lot of teachers are afraid because of health and safety, because of unsafe roads, because you've got to have so many extra people with you and where do you find them? I mean, in this particular school, we like to take an extra teacher or, or another member of staff, not just parents, but and that's just for safety, really. And line up on the pavement. I think it's important not to scare teachers off doing fieldwork because the value from it is so enormous to the children um, mm. that the health and safety aspect of it mustn't stop letting children participate in something that's so valuable. Planning the day ahead has taken a lot of preparation, including a detailed recce by Deborah and her colleague Joanna Copley. So, are you going to bring them out of the back gate and up here? Yes, I am, but I've got to be careful because of this road. So what we really need is to do a risk assessment on the yeah. area around here. Yeah, we do. It won't, shouldn't be too busy because it's not as if it's sort of end of school time. In terms of planning, you really need to do work a few months ahead of yourself because although you've got the ideas in your head and then you get them down on paper, which is great, but then you've got to resource them. And quite often it's the resources and the resourcing of a topic that takes the most amount of time. Now we're quite fortunate in this school that we've got a wealth of resources. However, with regard to the field study, the resourcing is limited because this is the first time it's been tried. Well, if you want to do a, if you want to do a sketch map, we could do it like this. So yeah. I've got like the Welsh mountains here and then Clevedon yeah. over there. Yeah, if I do it in a, as an outline map, yeah. is that OK? Yeah, that'd be great. I'll have to take it back and do it properly because this is a really rough sketch. I might have a look at your photographs. OK, who can tell me what's the name of this road? Molly? This is called Pilgrim's Way. Does anybody know what a pilgrim is? 
That's not a bird, sweetheart. Pilgrim was somebody who was on their way to a religious place. Yes, I think this was useful, which obviously they decided on during the recce. It means having two or three stopping points en route to the top. So it not only gives children a chance to catch their breath, but it means that there's learning and questioning Absolutely. and thinking going on, uh, building up to when they get to the main vantage point at the top. I like to think for many of them, they will now learn when they go on a walk that there are more interesting things to look at than just literally going from A to B and getting to the top before they start to look. Right, watch the steps. Steps, Philip. Well done, Molly. This group, I want you to have a look at what can you see over here. Tell me all the things you can see here. Andrew, you see rocks. What else do you see, Ben? Logs. Hannah. Mooty, Tree. trees. But the most important feature here that you've already picked out is this, or these rocks that are sticking out of the ground. Now these rocks are limestone, and the limestone was used to make this wall here, and it was also used to make many of the very much older houses in this area. Watch out for the horse poo. What I'd like you to think about is what can you hear now? What can you hear? Close your eyes and concentrate on the noises you can hear. I think it's one of the strengths of field work, that the children are beginning to use senses that they wouldn't ever think of using in the classroom. It's something which every child, regardless of ability, is Absolutely. capable of saying very, very what important. they can hear. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice open activity. OK, hands up if you can tell me what you heard. Jack. A big boom. Anybody guess where that big boom might have come from? Hannah? The wind. Mm, might have come from the wind, but it didn't in this instance. Molly? Oh, could have come from the church, but I know it didn't come from the church. Oh, ben? There were people loading on the lorry. Absolutely. What are they loading on the lorry, Ben? Um, parcels or something. What have we been talking about all the way up through the woods? Hannah? Bricks. Not bricks, Andrew? Rocks. Rocks. What type of rocks, Molly? Limestone. Yay, limestone rocks. What we're going to do now is we're going to split into two. Deborah splits the group in two. Bob Champ will focus on the history of the hill, while her group will concentrate on the geography. Right, what can we see? I think that fully justifies all the effort in getting all these parents organised mm. and the planning mm. for the field work, just to have one or two children being amazed at what they can see. Andrew. Oh, Ailish, don't touch the fence, sweetie. Remember what we said? It's as if they've gone right through the middle. You can see where those trees have grown. At one time, that was being quarried as well. And for some reason, they chose to leave those bits of rock. I don't know why. Maybe somebody here might be able to find out. Who said their dad used to work at the quarry? Emily, it's your mission to find out some information for us about the quarry. OK, we're going to move on now because the main reason we stopped here is so that we can see the quarry. We're actually going to move on to an area now where you can see this area to the north here much more clearly. And this is where we're going to start our work. OK, so let's go. Watch out for the horse's manure. Well, it's not really manure, I suppose. Poo. <laughs> it's like being a parent. You're constantly on the lookout for somebody they might be able to tread in. But this is what we're going to be doing our field sketch of. And hopefully you can see a church. Can anybody see it? Because it's quite difficult to pick out. What shape do you think the church spire is? What shape, Andrew? It's like a tower. Probably. It's a tower. Well done. How many sides do you think that tower has got? Four. Four. So what kind of shape? What 3D shape would we call it? Yep. Cuboid. A cuboid. It's not a cone like many church spires, is it? It's actually a cuboid. I liked the reference to which shape is it, cuboid. So yes, good cross-curricular work there with mathematics. A bit of maths by the scruff of the neck. Right, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to get your geography sheet, please, and we're going to do that first. You've got your geography sheets, get your pencils out. OK, it says, what have we walked and passed on along the way? Circle the appropriate words. So thinking about our journey up here. I think here where the teacher is encouraging the children to think about their walk up the hill is a useful one. Getting them to think about the things that they passed, helping them mm. to pick out key words and vocabulary. Yes, and it's, it's one which is presented in a way just ticking off. So it doesn't mean that 
children are concerned with things like getting the correct spelling. No, they haven't yes. got to write the words at all, they're just circling, aren't they? Simple recording. And, and uh, plenty of adult helpers who've obviously been mm. well briefed yes. about how to help the children. Right, and as soon as you finish that sheet, you need to go on to your field sketch. Right, let's have a look at your instructions, Simon. Say, this map is for you to complete. Read the instructions below, then draw and label everything you can. It says, this map is a rough line drawing of what you can see in front of you. Do you know what the name of that sea is? Um, the Bristol Channel. Yeah, well done. Now, unfortunately, the tide is actually in. So you can't see this section here, but what do you think would be here normally? Think about when the tide goes out in Western Supermare. Sinking mud? Yes, absolutely. This, what do you think this area is? Have a look over there. What's down there? Please. Yeah. That's a very good, clear field sketch. And she's clearly fulfilling one of the elements of the national curriculum, isn't she, by uh, encouraging the children to learn appropriate fieldwork techniques. <laughs> So the opportunity isn't there to talk about, even if they're not writing about where things are in relation to each other, they can develop some directional vocabulary as well. It's another important skill mm. in geography, isn't it? I think many colleagues watching this would be thinking they're very fortunate and privileged to have that on their doorstep. Very rich landscape, isn't um, it? Even with a less varied landscape, there's still plenty mm. of these ideas, these skills, these approaches which can be used with children to develop their fieldwork skills. Okay, can I ask everybody please to collect their sheets and firmly clip them onto their boards and put your pencils somewhere safe so they don't get lost. Come up. Once the field sketches have been completed, the two groups meet to set off back to school. But has all Deborah's effort been worth it? Have you enjoyed it? Yeah! Great. What do you think you've learned? something today? Yeah! Good, because we're going to find out what you've learned this afternoon. I think it was very well organised. I think Deb's had the class sorted. She'd thought about her helpers. She was very calm and the children had a wonderful time. They really, really enjoyed it. So I think the organisation was superb. The field sketch exercise was very well planned. I think on the way up, inevitably, the kind of pupil learning that was going on was very much teacher directed. Uh, Debs was tending to tell the children, not really giving them a chance to think about what they were seeing. Sometimes some teachers would probably try to build in a few more open-ended questions. Well it seemed to be very successful. I mean I think you could see just how motivated all the children were, how much they were learning about geography and other things including social skills and so on. And it didn't rain, which is always a bonus. So you know, it, I, I think it went very well indeed. I just think it's good for them to get to get out and about, to get out in the world. There are so many kids out there who maybe never actually get to go anywhere. You know, they may be playing their street and that's great. But then there are probably kids that have probably seen far more and had a lot more experience than other children. Yeah.